Welcome to my review of Capernaum. As we begin, I want you to keep this question in mind. How many unbelievers today have you heard ask, if God is real, then why doesn't he just come down and show himself to me? If he did that, then I would believe. Is a miracle all it would take to convince an unbeliever to accept Jesus as their savior? I will address this at the end of this video. So we know Jesus was born in Bethlehem, lived in Nazareth most of his time on earth, and then moved to Capernaum at the beginning of his three-year ministry. Matthew 4, 13, leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake. But why Capernaum? Why this little fishing village of less than 2,000 people? Well, Capernaum is located on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee, but it was also the location of a very important trade route called the Via Maris. This connected travelers from Egypt to Syria. At Damascus, it would link up to the King's Highway and go further north, eventually leading travelers to Europe in the west or further east into Asia. Jesus' reasoning to set up his base of operations in Capernaum during his ministry would seem to be to allow his message of hope and salvation to spread around the world. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 through 25 says, Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judah, and the region across from the Jordan followed him. Mark chapter 3, verse 8 also adds Idumea and Tyre and Sidon as places where people came and followed him. These seeds being planted would further be watered by the Apostle Paul and other early Christians after Jesus ascended into heaven. In fact, this road would have been the same road Saul used on his way to Damascus when he was going to arrest Jewish Christians. But along the way, he encountered Jesus and his life was changed forever. Here is a milestone on display at Capernaum that was used along the Via Maris that was uncovered in the 1970s that dates back to the early 2nd century AD. This shows that it was still a very important travel route 100 years after Jesus. Now, I will go over some of the events recorded in the Bible that happened in Capernaum as I discuss the ruins that are visible today. Here is believed to be Peter's house. It currently has a church built on top of it, which is also built over a 5th century church that was in the shape of an octagon. These walls here are from that Byzantine church, but looking through the glass floor of the modern church today, you can see the stones from this first century home. Regardless if it was truly Peter's house or not, Jesus most likely would have taught here, being it was the biggest home in the area. In Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, we see Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. And in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, Jesus heals a paralytic that was let down by his friends through the roof. Both of these events could have easily happened at this location. Here are some of the homes of the first century. Now, besides Peter and Andrew living in Capernaum, we also know Matthew lived here as well. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13, Jesus ate at Matthew's house. In Mark chapter 5, verse 21 through 43, Jesus raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. Now, on the way to Jairus' house, in Mark chapter 5, verses 25 through 34, Jesus heals a woman who was sick for 12 years. Now, Mark and Luke do not say where these two miracles happened, but Matthew chapter 9 seems to indicate this happened in Capernaum. In John chapter 4, verses 43 through 54, Jesus heals the nobleman's son. And Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 through 13, Jesus heals the Roman centurion's servant. So it's possible any of these homes here could have been Matthew's, Jairus's, the nobleman, or the Roman centurion's. Now, right next to where we are is the Greek Orthodox part of Capernaum that has not been excavated because they didn't want their section to become a tourist destination like the Franciscan section is today. So there's likely more homes buried underneath. Now, going back to the Roman centurion, Luke chapter 7 verse 5 states that he was responsible for building the synagogue of Capernaum. The synagogue you see here was built in the 4th century AD on top of the synagogue of Jesus' day. Two things we know happened at this synagogue was in Luke chapter 4, verse 31 through 37, Jesus cast out a demon from a man. And in John chapter 6, verse 25 through 59, in one of his most divisive sermons, Jesus declares himself as the bread of life. Now, these white limestones you see here are what was used in the building of this Byzantine synagogue. But below the white limestone, you can see these black basalt stones. This was the original synagogue of Jesus' time. So it is quite possible Jesus would have stepped right here on this stone. How cool is that? Now remember the question from the unbelievers I wanted you to keep in mind. If God is real, then why doesn't he just come down and show himself to me? And if he did, then I would believe. 
Despite the popularity Jesus had and the miracles the people of Capernaum saw, Jesus still ended up condemning them for their unbelief. Matthew chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to the heavens? No, you will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. Now in Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, the religious leaders asked Jesus for a sign. And he would not give one except for the sign of Jonah, meaning that as Jonah was in the belly of a great fish for three days, Jesus would be buried for three days. But why wouldn't Jesus show the religious leaders a sign? It's because they still wouldn't have believed him as the Son of God. In Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31, we see the rich man and the beggar, Lazarus. Both die and Lazarus was in heaven. The rich man is in torment. The rich man asked Abraham to send Lazarus back from the dead to talk to his five brothers to warn them. Listen to Abraham's response. Luke chapter 16, verse 31. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Bible is pretty clear that signs and wonders will not help someone except Jesus as their Savior. Signs and wonders would be amazing to see, but confessing your sins, asking Jesus into your heart, and living a life for Him and not for yourself is what holds people back from accepting Jesus. Just like the people of Capernaum, today people don't accept Jesus as their Savior, maybe because they would become an outcast in their family or circle of friends, or it would cause them to actually repent and turn from their selfish and sinful ways. Ultimately, when people choose not to accept Jesus, they are choosing their own way, which is pride and selfishness. All the signs and wonders Jesus did was not enough to convince everyone that he was the Son of God, not because of lack of power from Jesus, but because signs and wonders do not cure the pride in our hearts. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Salvation has nothing to do with what you see with your eyes. It has to do with what you believe in your heart. Well, this concludes my review of Capernaum. I really hope you enjoyed it. In my next review, I will be taking you to Magdala another coastal town on the Sea of Galilee, and home of Mary Magdalene. But until next time, thank you for watching, and God bless.